Shalom. Call Lamla Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai Bahashim Rakwakadash. All praises be to the Most High Yahweh in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so. Pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad. And double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson. The writing is on the wall. <coughs> the writing is on the wall. Uh, this is Elder Anathazakba channel out of South Carolina. And he did a video, one moment, let me show you, right here. He did a video. He had to change the name because of the algorithms, but it got 37,000 views, which we could give a damn less, but just to help reemphasize a point. People are getting concerned. They ignored the Lord's messengers. They ignored the counsel, and the knowledge of the Most High. We told you to avoid the serpent's piss, the serpent's tonic. But no, no, no man can be this evil. It's not possible, mate. Well, we told you. We told you. Anyway, when you go into his channel... Let's see if we can find that video. Where is it? I don't see it. See? It's be it's being heavily shadow banned. <coughs> see? Anyway. Yeah, I don't see it. Anyway, not a problem. So it's blatantly obvious right now what's going on. And many experts are saying, give these individuals three to five years. I'll just leave it at that. That trust in the serpent's tonic. Let's go here. <clears throat> Notice the title. Man of lawlessness. You can't judge me. Shake your thing. Do what you want to do. I can't tell you who to sock it to. Do what thou wilt. Second Thessalonians 2, verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren... By the coming of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, and by our gathering together unto him. <clears throat> this is written in a, a agreement of understanding that the elect gets the message. Brethren, and our gathering together. The elect are being gathered by the word. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord, Yahawashai Hamashiach, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that day of Hamashiach is at hand. <coughs> so the day of the Lord is near. It's blatantly obvious at this point. The signs are present. The prophecies are prevalent. We're seeing these things. The Bible says many shall be taken in a great number. So the citizens are under a attack. It's happening all around us. 
2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 2, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Hamashiach is at hand. So the elect of Israel have peace of mind and stability of spirit through this doctrine. Let's go to verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. And this is who we're talking about. That's ruling in the last days. And through the spirit, it's the small hats. Amalek. That's really who it's talking about. But nevertheless, they're of the nation or the chief house of the tabernacles of Edom. So the most high judges nations. Just like you had prophets under captivity in ancient Babylon. He's not going to say, oh, no, you're a prophet, so you're excused. No, he's a big picture manager. He is the chief executive officer of the universe. So we're here. And they're going to mandate being tagged, monitored, and tracked, or linked in, so to speak, through this technology. We told you, that's coming. <coughs> that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Hamashiach is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Who's destroying the earth? Colonization, technology, science, test tube babies. See? Legalizing unaliving people after birth and up to six months in some states that they're pushing for. Who's doing that? Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called the Most High, or that is worship, so that he, as the Most High, sitteth in the temple of the Most High, showing himself that he is the most high who gave us a golden retriever with blonde hair and blue eyes and said, this is our savior. Who did that? Who did it? It's you, evil E. It's you. And we see you. You can no longer hide yourself. Who put himself up as the most high? Look up the George Washington slash Baphomet statue. B-A-P-H-O-M-E-T. The George Washington Baphomet statue. Look that up. So we are under the daughter of Babylon. No, no, we gotta we gotta we gotta take our time. Why is America the daughter of Babylon? <clears throat> well, the Edomites were there when the Israelites fell around 586 BC, and they helped the ancient Babylonians take down Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Nevertheless, that southern portion 
would still remain somewhat intact, leaning up to our Messiah's time on earth. But still, the Babylonians put them in captivity. So, it goes a little step further. They would begin to take on the ancient Babylonian customs and worships as it is this day. And they did the same thing of the ancient Greeks, Egyptians, Romans, Assyrians, Assyrians. See? So they took a little bit of this and a little bit of that and created or stirred the melting pot, which we know today as America. It's a mixture of ancient Babylonian rituals, customs, and worships. <clears throat> See, let's keep going. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he, as the Most High, sitteth in the temple of the Most High, showing himself that he is the Most High. So notice the title here, Man of Lawlessness. Let's go here. Prayer of Azariah. One. See, Prayer of Azariah. And thou didst deliver us into the hands of lawless enemies, most hateful forsakers of God, and to an unjust king and the most wicked in all the world. See, now this is ancient Babylon right here. But remember, O Lord, the children of Edom, the daughter of Babylon. That's where? Psalms 137. The, mo the hopeful elect must study. So this is the three Hebrew boys under uh, King Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar is a title, an office, or position. That's not his actual name. <laughs> so the modern, the modern day king of Babylon is Amalek, the chief, the first of the nations. When you look at the modern day people in Russia, many of them are are their bloodlines go back to the Khazarian Empire, Khazars, which are small hats, which extend or bleed over into Georgia in that region, Tbilisi, Georgia, if I'm not mistaken, or that entire region, and the Ukraine. So that chief is Amalek that's ruling over the nations in these last days. And thou didst deliver us into the hands of lawless enemies, most hateful forsakers of the Most High, and to an unjust king, and the most wicked in all the world. See? So this even extends back to ancient Babylon. So now it connects to Isaiah chapter 14. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? The so-called Illuminati, the light bearers, so-called. That's the 13 Illuminati families. High level, small hats. That's the king of Babylon, the chief, you see? Or, <laughs> let me just leave it at that. Let's, let's keep going. So when you look at these names from the three Hebrew boys that was cast into the fiery furnace, you had Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, and they were given Babylonian names. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Let's keep going.
See, let's go to Daniel 1. So we're under a lawless man or the son of perdition, destruction. So during Paul's time, they were called Romans. They're Edomites. Edom is Rome. And in the Greek, Idumia, same people. They comprise of the Khazarian Empire, the 7th century A.D., between 600 and 900 A.D. Let's go to Daniel 1, verse 6. Now among these were of the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael and Azariah. Let's look up this name, Azariah. And this is heavy. I have not done this in the past. Azariah comes from the Hebrew. Strong's H, 5838. Azariah. Azariah. Gusenius Lexicon. Azariah, Azariah. This is beautiful. Yahweh has helped us. That's what it means. And notice these men were Judites. That's heavy too. The Most High raised up Judah first. So that is a signature or a sign that the tabernacle of David is being raised up. The other tribesmen, the mighty men, are rallying behind Judah. So the tabernacle of David is comprised of all tribes, northern and southern kingdom. So this rebuilding starts with the chief cornerstone, a Judite, followed by the Judites. After him, holy men. See, so Azariah, Yahweh, has helped us. So this is a telltale sign, a clue as to how close we are. The fiery furnace is coming. Those nuclear missiles. And the Most High is going to help his elect to raise them up out of the death or the snares of death. Let's go to Psalms 9, <coughs> verse 13. The book of Psalms, chapter 9, verse 13. Have mercy upon me, O Lord. Consider my trouble which I suffer of them that hate me, thou that liftest me up from the gates of death. This is beautiful, that I may show forth all thy praise in the gates of the daughter of Zion. I will rejoice in thy salvation, so the gates of hell shall not prevail against thee. Ooh-wee! See that? Let's go into this, lift this up. This is beautiful. The caveman is getting ready to go down. The caveman is on his last leg. A Roman Empire, revised, 2.0. What does that lift this me up? This is too much. It's too much. <clears throat> lift this me up. Come on, Esau. Strong's H, 7311. Room. Room. To rise or raise. To bring up or be exalted. To be extolled. Mm. To set up. To mount up. To set up. Woo! This is beautiful. Psalms 9 and 13. 
Have mercy upon me, O Lord. Consider my trouble, which I suffer of them that hate me. Thou that liftest me up from the gates of death, that I may show forth all thy praise in the gates of the daughter of Zion, I will rejoice in thy salvation. The heathen are sunk down in the pit that they have made in the net which they hid is their own foot taken. So the nuclear devastation is going to consume the enterprise of the wicked. The tabernacle of David is going to be raised and become a battle axe change in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. It's too much. The gates of hell is not going to prevail against the Lord's temple. When you look at this title right here, I don't know about anybody else, but the Spirit shows me Jacob and Esau. As soon as I see this, Jacob understood that he needed to suffer first. That's why when you read Genesis 30 through 33, he was. it looks like he was trying to befriend Esau, but no. Vocat Malone is a deceiver. I saw the video of him that the beloved elder Yashawamba did. He was saying that Jacob was trying to be an everlasting friend or build an eternal companionship with Esau. No, he was doing what he do, supplanting Esau. The very name, Yaquab, sup supplanter. Anyway, <coughs> Yahweh Shai was able to slip this story in under the radar. That's what he did. He used subtility. So he's talking about Jacob and Esau right here. The rich man is Esau that inherited the fatness of the earth spoken of in Genesis 27. And Lazarus, that's Jacob. Because Esau broke the yoke from off his neck. He did it during, after the reign of King David and after the kingdom split into two. Matter of fact, let's go to 2 Chronicles 21 and 7. See, he revolted against the southern kingdom. Second Chronicles 21, verse 7. Howbeit the Lord would not destroy the house of David because of the covenant that he had made with David. And as he promised to give a light to him and to his sons forever. The revolt against Judah. Let's read it. Second Chronicles 21, verse 8. In his days, the Edomites revolted from under the dominion of Judah and made themselves a king. So now, what has been will be again. Now we're under the king of Babylon, which is the chief, the high prince or the chief, Amalek, small hats. In modern times, see, let's keep going. It says, as is this day. I'm trying to remember where that's at. One moment. Second Chronicles 21, verse 10. So the Edomites revolted from under the hand of Judah unto this day. The same time also did Lipna revolt from under his hand because he had forsaken the Lord God of his fathers. And these rebellious kings of Judah or the southern kingdom and the rebellious kings of Israel, northern kingdom, are back today in other camps. And I'm not going to call out these camp names. You see them 
revolting against the Lord's counsel, the apostles, the elders. See, unto this day, well, we got to go back here. <clears throat> See? Second Thessalonians 2, verse 2, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Hamashiach is at hand. Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of it that follow. So the day of the Lord culminates in the massive destruction by fire from these missiles, followed by the laser and chariot fire from the so-called UFOs, the chariots of the Lord. See, so the day of the Lord is the birth of the nation of Jacob and the death of the rich man. But Lazarus is being resurrected from the grave into glory with these Cadillacs of the sky, the so-called UFOs. I know you see it, but the rich man is being cast into the grave, the valley of the dry bones, which is really slavery, affliction, and persecution. See, let's, uh, where do I want to go? Let's go back to Psalms 9. See, Psalms 9 and 15. The heathen are sunk down in the pit that they made, in the net which they hid is their own foot taken. So Jacob has a hole of the foot or heel of Esau, pulling him down with the word. Psalms 9 and 16. The Lord is known by the judgment which he executeth, the wicked is snared in the work of his own hand. The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget the Most High. Connects where? Obadiah, verses 15 and 16. That the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen, as thou hast done it shall be done unto thee, and thy reward shall return upon thine own head. This is beautiful. The caveman is on borrowed time. It's just beautiful. Now let's go back to Jacob and Esau, the rich man and Lazarus. Luke 16 and 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. So the international bankers have built a global empire. Yahweh Shai saw this vision in Matthew chapter 4, where the spiritual demon Satan showed him these things, which he already knew it, but the story had to play out. Yahweh Shai knew all things, knows all things. But he had to be tempted 40 days. Four, <laughs> four represents mercy. Let's keep going. I got to close out. There, Luke 16 and 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores. So the Israelites have been, bru have been bruised as an enemy, wounded by the Most High. And Esau was given the fatness of the earth, gold, oil, and drugs. And real estate, which is most importantly, he's the landowner in these last days. He's living in palaces. Google the Rothschild 
palaces. Just Google it when you get time. Let's look up this word sumptuously. Because I can't explain it well. Comes from the Greek. Strong's G 2988. Lampros. Lampros. See? Luxurious. Look up the Rothschilds palaces if you still think the Bible is a fairy tale a fairy tale story. Let's look up the meaning of the word Lazarus. That's Jacob. Lazarus comes from the Greek. Strong's G twenty nine seventy six Lazarus Lazarus Whom the Most High helps. This is showing you this is going to be Babylon in the last days. Oh my goodness gracious. Watch this. See, let's go back to Daniel 1. And I know somebody saw it. Daniel 1 and 7. Let's go to 6. What does Azariah's name mean? Which was ancient Babylon. <coughs> Azariah, watch this. Comes from the Hebrew. Strong's H, 5838. Azariah. Azariah. Yahweh Lexicon. has helped. Azariah. Azariah. Yahweh has helped. So this projection of the rich man, poor man, is Jacob and Esau in the last days. That the day of the Lord is at hand. In the daughter of Babylon. See, Azariah. Let's go back to Lazarus meaning. Lazarus. 16 and 20. So we're here. Lazarus comes from the Greek. Strong's G 2976. Lazarus. Lazarus. Whom the Most High helps. So this is Jacob and Esau in the last days. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores. So we are wounded as an enemy of the Lord, but are being restored. Verse 21, and desiring and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So these other nations have grocery stores set up, restaurants, tents of sustenance, bazaars, malls, see, shopping centers. So these represent the other nations. Anyway, I think we beat a dead horse. I'm getting ready to drink water like a horse. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakadash, Rakatham. We got next, Lord willing, Palm Yasharala, and Abad Bibal. Shalom.